Hello everyone, Master Xeon1001 here, and in this quick demonstration, I wanted to show y'all the add-on I've been working on called Hard Ops. Now, um, before we begin, I'll jump to layer two. We'll just take a look at this object here. Now, normally, whenever you're modeling, you'll end up with something similar to this, and then you know your next impulse is to uh, you know give it subdivision with like Control One, and then you know put some uh, perimeter loops here to you know ensure everything is kept and by the end of it you have more geometry than you wish you had so the alternative um, in the previous video I was showing y'all that I would go in select mode select sharp edges um, you know I had select the additional edges I needed and then I would mark sharp and then I would set the bevel weight to one. And with that, I would be able to smooth it, uh, turn on auto smooth, set this to like 60, and now the model is looking good. However, that is a lot of keystrokes. And so I've been on a quest to reduce all those keystroke subdivisions out the window. So to demonstrate it in action, I'll just quickly uh, clean all that off. And so instead of marking the areas and setting the bevel weight increasing everything instead I can just Q simple sharpen and then right here probably need to do a correction in fact there's also a Q menu in the edit mode where I can just mark it as sharp and now everything is good now this is the simple sharpen the simple sharpen just does those operations I just described but let's talk about the uh, complex sharpen now complex sharpen is a whole nother beast. Um, this one is part of the um, leveling up where you know the mesh will have a nice bevel around the edges allowing it to uh, you know look a little more realistic and the parts a little bit more uh, interconnected with each other. So that is simple sharpen and complex sharpen. Now solidify sharpen uh, just to show that one and of course it's a sharpen operator that involves the um, solidify which is another way I, I do my hard surfacing sometimes so we'll just take these pieces press Y to separate it now it's all done so I can press Q solidify sharpen and now this piece is all set up maybe apply to scale just make sure there's no weirdness and now you can see kinda um, what's going on here so this one is only used for objects I want to make thick and as well as beveling separate like so um, you know a lot of these tools um, are because of um, different things that I always find myself doing repeatedly and repeatedly so this one is um, for making circulars so what I'll do is just take a plane extrude it out uh, select these two pieces extrude and dissolve the faces pull this up and you know, maybe put a couple more loop cuts in here, pull this down, flip the normals because they're reversed. Now, if you're wondering what theme I'm using, I'm using Amarath with the latest Blender 2.76 build. Uh, I was originally waiting because I was having such great stability with the last version, but, you know, uh, I wanted to come in and play with that edge offset, which is also something I want to play with and uh, eventually add to this as well. Um, but this is something that I've been working on in my free time with the help of a couple of friends. Um, however, at this time, it still is not ready for public release. So if it's something that you're interested in trying, then go ahead and check out my Patreon because they are getting it as a reward this month. Um, you know, personally, my goal is to get everyone of you who um, you know are my fans over to my Patreon page because that's where I really. Um, put the majority of my time in into um, you know making worthwhile rewards and making everyone um, glad that they signed up so now we got this piece set up I'll press Q and choose array twist 360 after setting the rotation and all this will do is just set it up to be a round uh, bent object and so this is something I find myself doing all the time and if you're curious about the uh, complexities of it, you know, there's also this NA, which will not apply the uh, array in simple to form. 
And so you can combo this with the simple sharpen. And it didn't work out good, so uh, we want to go and select these edges, press Q, mark sharp. Now, marking sharp uh, through this menu will set the bevel, set the sharp, and um, yeah, set the bevel, set the sharp, which is the goal. You know, I don't like having to press Control E and go through all those operations. Now, the other thing it does um, in the original is that it'll uh, apply it remove doubles in edit mode and you know reset the orientation so just to show that in action because I'm pretty proud of it I'll press Q choose a ray twist 360 and this thing is complete so I would use this um, you know for cylindrical shapes um, so just to demonstrate it in action you know I would just cut this in here choose a complex sharpen uh, maybe choose simple sharpen just for now. Uh, complex sharpen will apply the modifiers and the history as well as um, create um, a bevel modifier to put on top of it. So I don't want to do that just yet. Now another one I want to show you is something called in circle, um, which these are all just uh, some macros I've been trying to compile together. So before that, let me uh, show you circle vert. You just choose a vert choose circle selection and now it's a circle and you can choose a group of it circle selection circles everywhere so that works out pretty good um, but to show you in circle um, this one's pretty impressive in my opinion is I'll press Q choose in circle and get an error because the script is still not ready for public consumption and I'll just uh, go ahead and apply that press Q complex sharpen now with the complex sharpen, we see that there's a nice little ring happening on all the edges, which will uh, definitely make it look better in the render. Um, you know, there's a couple of different ways I could have done this. Um, I find that sometimes using cylinders that are a little bit denser than 32, like maybe 64, will cause it from showing the invisible faceting that only I see that's haunting my eyes. But with that aside, I think I basically explained all of this. Now, uh, clean bevels and sharps is also good. It removes all modifiers, removes all sharps, removes all bevels. So that way you can just cleanly uh, re-add it. But I actually have this uh, manual control here for these pieces. Also, I could go through, select these edges, press Q, just choose clean, and it'll remove those bevels so it's not beveling things it's not supposed to, um, which is the goal here. So over to layer one, I'll show you this in action now. Um, earlier I just modeled a uh, quick power inverter just to um, have something to play with. So we'll just uh, convert this to a mesh. So let's take a look at the bolts first. So with the bolts, we'll just choose simple sharpen. Much better. Same for this one. And now for this piece, we want to choose complex sharpen. Now if we look at this, in edge mode we can see all the dark red edges of everywhere that's going to be beveled in fact any polygonal errors are um, regrettable to say the least um, <coughs> sorry lost train of thought there um, any polygonal errors you'll just need to clean up manually like I'm doing here you know I don't want my ingons uh, messed up so I'll just select this selection, press uh, Q, mark sharp, and now we have our inverter. Now if we look at it up close, there's a nice little bevel on all of the extreme angles just to uh, you know, clean this thing up, make it look a little smoother. Now alternatively, let's say I put a subdivision on it. It's not going to be pretty. Now um, you may be asking yourself, why don't you use subdivision? What you got to get subdivision? Well, I don't have anything against subdivision. However, um, sometimes I don't want the whole shape to receive additional geometry just on the account of a few verts. So here I use the solidify, uh, sharpen on it. Now, as of right now, since it's still in very early development and I don't know anything about scripting and I'm getting through this by luck and the help of um, a group of people, um, normally I would not be able to even get this far, but it's, it's, it's fun and, and kind of a learning experience. Like as I 
feel more acquainted with the uh, PPY. I feel more powerful. I feel um, like I can finally make a toolkit that will help you become me, um, which is kind of weird sounding. You know, for this one, I will just select this, select this object, Control L, um, modifiers. We'll choose this, choose simple sharpen. And we have a little bit of an error in there, but I'm not even gonna bother. But now you see, you know, just with the quickness, everything is looking much, much better. So it's more than just a general operator. It's a series of operations, and it's something that I'm pretty proud of myself since this is something that uh, I have been complaining to other people about, asking them to make scripts like, hey, you know, I got these problems in Blender, can you help me out? You know, the program is great and all, but you know, I hate pressing these buttons over and over. So, luckily, I was pointed at a macro recorder. In fact, try to get some decent. Front lighting. Oh, there we go. And you know, let's give it a material. Now, when it comes to material assignment, there's another piece of this that's coming, and that's going to be the part that will allow you to select planar regions to be able to apply materials quickly. But the goal is to make this as a toolkit that not only works with the bull tool, but is capable of working on your mesh after the bull tool to make things easier for you. Um, because you know people make these shapes everything looks faceted you take it in the render it looks like crap people are um, still using edge split don't use edge split use auto smooth and um, that's it now I definitely want to make a um, a public demo of this to um, give away to everyone and also probably throw in uh, blending away to pain however that is just a quick demo of Hard Ops version 0 0.0.1. I don't know, maybe it's 0.3. Who knows? But with that, I'd like to thank you all for watching and happy blending.